Again, this is the base knowledge for short circuit calculation. Let's take a look on the last two items of the base knowledge of short circuit calculation, the per unit and the requirement of short circuit. Well, you may also ask why do we need to use per unit system? You may ask, Sir Bear, why do we need to use per unit system? Why not other methods? Per unit's methods give us values where impedances and other quantities are normalized across different voltage level to a common base. What really are those reasons? In a per unit method, quantities are the same on either side of a transformer independent of voltages level. By normalizing quantities to a common base, both hand and automatic calculation are simplified. It is important because it improves numerical instability in both manual and automatic calculation methods. So that's why it is used in uh, software like SKM, ETA, Power System, EDSA, and whatever system that is using short circuit calculation. So the per unit system simplifies and is standardized calculation. It is like converting different currency to a common currency, making it easier to compare and perform calculation. Imagine if a world with only one currency of money. You can do anything, right? You can go anywhere. And at the same time, you can buy with just only one currency. So the same with the per unit system. Per unit data representation yields important information about relative magnitudes. So per unit value helps simplify complex calculation by eliminating the need to repeatedly convert between different units and voltage level. By representing all values in a standardized form, calculation becomes more straightforward. Kasi when you do the per unit calculation in all your electrical system, kahit ano pwede mo nang hanapin kasi same na sila lahat eh. Okay? So, scaling. So, in per unit value, it helps us to scale up or down the power system parameters while maintaining the same per unit values. This enables engineers to study the effect of changes in the system's size without redoing all the calculation. Okay? So, it's also for fault analysis, in short circuit calculation using per unit value helps to determine the fault current levels throughout the entire system, which is very crucial for designing protection scheme and selecting appropriate equipment ratings. In summary, using per unit calculation in power system analysis, including short circuit calculation, it simplifies the process actually. It makes us to easier to compare different components and help us to understand the overall system behavior. These methods allow engineers and technicians to work more efficiently and make better informed decisions. Now, let's proceed to the requirement of short circuit calculation. First, you need to have a single line diagram reflecting all the electrical components I mentioned previously. When you are invited to do the electrical design analysis of a certain establishment, maybe it commercial or industrial, you need to see the single line diagram of that establishment because that is the number one requirement to start electrical design analysis calculation. The second requirement you need to know is to get the schedule of loads. It is important data wherein there is a KVA load, there is a load current, the size of wires, and sometimes you cannot get it the length of wire. If there is, so that was that's better. So in our previous discussion, I told you what to do with the length of wires, okay? And I will never mention it here. So, the third requirement is the calculated impedances of utility transformer, wires and cables, motors, lamp loads. This should be tabulated. So, we have Excel file for that, for the tabulation of those uh, impedances, okay? 
So the fourth requirement is you need to simplify all the single line diagram to an equivalent impedance diagram. So you need to eliminate all non-contributor of short circuit. And you need to make sure that you convert all the component, electrical components to impedances. So the impedance diagram should be labeled carefully. Passes should be properly identified for the number of fault points for the determination of high rating of protection. Okay? The fifth requirement is to simplify the impedance diagram to the fault point reference to be able to use Ohm's law to calculate the fault current in a specific points. To summarize, showing here in the slides are the steps we covered. We covered all those base knowledge of short circuit calculation and the steps requirement to complete our study. So you have the base knowledge, which is one to six, the single line diagram, the schedule of loads, the impedance values calculated, impedance diagram converted single line diagram to impedance diagram, and the equivalent circuit for short circuit currents, the Thevenin's equivalence. And then at the same time, you completed a, a short circuit calculation in one point of the electrical system. Okay? So, just a recap of what we have learned. Short circuit is needed because we want to determine the chaotic rating of the equipment protection so that we can also select protective devices and identify the underrated protection existing in our electrical system to make sure we can avoid any causes of fault. We also identify the common sources of fault current, which is very important in simplifying our single line diagram. The fault came from utilities connection, generator, synchronous motor, induction motors, and mixed loads. We also discuss in details the causes of fault current in electrical systems so that we can implement our strategy to avoid the effect of voltage surges, prevent insulation deterioration, and loose connection, or even cuts the problem of moist accumulation and provides systematic procedure during preventive maintenance or engineering solution to prevent intrusion of rats, snakes, or animals into our electrical system that can cause short circuit. Next is, we learn the importance of transient property of currents. We know the magnitude of old current where we can base our sizing of chi so that we can evaluate whether our existing system is underrated or just complying. You have learned the convenient way of using Excel file to simplify complex calculation of impedances. Please study it well. It will help you a lot in the years to come as you go and do electrical design analysis in the future, right? You have acquired a new eyes on how to view a single line diagram and how to simplify it for short circuit calculation. Practice more often so you can acquire the skills better. As the board required, the per unit system calculation gives us more nearest value of the fault current we are computing. You know now the reason why we need to use per unit in order for us to normalize the values of the electrical system in focus, okay? Last, I presented to you the steps and requirements for you to perform short circuit calculation and all the base knowledge needed. I hope you built a confidence already that you can now start by your own doing a short calculation study. Thanks. You have to thank me later as we proceed to actual calculation. Now, let's create a single, simple diagram for, of your dream house. Sometimes it looks like this. You need, there is an overhead wire, the main feeder line. This is the load panel that you have where all the loads are connected. From our review of our sources of fault current, you can now distinguish, right? Where the fault current will be coming and eliminate those things that are not contributor of fault, right? 
the important data here is the fall at the point of connection and its equivalent impedance, which we will go once we do the calculations. Here is the load panel that you have that can be converted to lamp load because there was no 50 horsepower above from this point. Okay? We can all eliminate all static load and create a percentage of BA for motor loads for convenience outlet. Okay? And we can add all uh, BA for special appliances where we can consider the appliances that has motor on it, we need its total KVA to convert it into a lamp load impedance. Based from all the photos you see, we can simplify a residential house with a single load panel. Your single line diagram should look like this as shown in your screen, which you reflected in your drawing in our prelim. Now, let's create the impedance equivalent circuit for that. Therefore, this will be your impedance diagram and the fault point where you will calculate as shown by the arrow, okay? Next arrow, that's the impedance of the overhead wire we call it CC1. Next, this is a panel where we size our overcurrent protective device and we reflect it as a bus a point where we need to compute for the short circuit. This is the feeder line that supply our load panel. We call and labeled it ZC2. That's the load panel with the main breaker reflected as bus 2, where we will compute for the fault number 2. And finally, here is our lamp load. This is the complete impedance diagram as I show you in a step-by-step -step process. You may ask, why we need to compute for the short circuit in the bus, in bus one and bus two that we created? Answer, because we specify the size of the overcurrent protective device, but we don't know yet the chi rating of those circuit breaker in red square bus. Once we computed the short circuit there, we can specify the chi rating. Now you know. Another common single line diagram of your dream house look like this. Therefore, it's it's for two story or you can add for another one for a three story or more. Then we will this will be your impedance diagram looks like where you can calculate the fault in every bus to rate the chi rating of your overcurrent protective devices. The arrow shows you the C utility, ZC1, CZ2, CC3. And the two panel reflect the lamp load impedance, as you can see in your screen. And the three bus or fault point where we will calculate the short circuit. This will help us to uh, rate the kite rating of the overcurrent protective device that we size. I hope with that skill process in impedance creation, printed an image in your mind that those base knowledge I shared in short circuit calculation is needed so that we can start now to simplify impedance and calculate short circuit, which I will send to you the video of our discussion. Should there be clarification on the steps, Please watch again the videos that is posted here in YouTube for retention and mastery. See you in the next course module.